obviously today we are here to discuss what seems to be the future of pr or perhaps it already is right podcast is the new way we've seen over the years how people have shifted the way that content is being created it's shifted from video to creatives to now audio right people like to listen to things on the go so on that note before we begin i would like to understand from the three of you uh, what kind of podcast or what genre do you listen to mamta would you like to begin so i personally love uh, uh, logging into anything which is very self motivational inspirational even spiritual for that matter i think uh, the kind of content uh, we are getting to consume uh, we are really gaining the best of both the worlds as a consumer and as a creator both i think there is a you know like a plethora of choices not only to uh, be consuming but also to be creating the kind of content that you really wish to or, or you want to drive so my personal favorites are ranveer alabadia like like yeah. a no brainer <laughs> yeah yeah but uh, every now and then i do listen to industry experts um as well i mean some uh, international shows like uh, joe rogan show and uh, many others actually yeah many many of those joe rogan is actually something that we've also taken some inspiration from okay let's get to the questions uh shishi we'll start with you i think you've someone you are someone who is catering to a very niche industry not a lot of people have uh, such awareness about physics wala right so do you think podcasts are a better medium to kind of communicate that messaging build brand awareness and perhaps even reach a wider audience i think it is but you really have to see if your audience is listening to podcasts is your audience still attuned to knowing what podcasts are so for education i think there is a huge white space there where there is no you will not see any education such education as such podcast you know and it, there's a there's a lot of i mean we, i keep thinking we keep brainstorming internally should we be that those uh, you know the first brand to come out of that edtech podcast so to say but we're still deliberating because uh, this is increasing but we want to get it right if you don't get the podcasts right they will fail eventually like if you go by the numbers if you have 100 po- just giving you a number if you have 100 pos- podcasts this year 98 of them will fail by next uh, by the next episode or next three of them so we have to do it right i think that's the essence so yes they are they're great medium but we have to still learn how to get them right absolutely doing it right is the key i'd uh, i'd actually go a step further and say something more radical uh that podcast is such a medium where you would never know what is right you know it is a, it is a fast picking ever emerging medium while well, as much as we like to say that podcast is a new kid on the block but podcasts have been around for over two decades now uh, and it has a huge potential there is no one way to get it right until you really uh, you know dive into the deep end and uh, until uh, and consistency you know so the doing doing it right part what shishi just said uh, um about whether they would do well by the next year or not that's only that people uh leave the breath halfway you know they don't go the full lap uh, so if you you are not consistent with your content be it video audio pr and we know that about pr popularly right what we what we talk about is um, that it has to be a sustained effort so it's just the same for podcasts too yeah i would uh, again totally agree with srishti and mamta here uh, within podcast we have uh, seen the uh, how podcast have uh, evolved within the industry first it was just audio now again this visual effect has been given to it uh, they are building uh, they are great the i think the most important tool for building thought leadership as of now so uh, i would say that yes uh, there is increase in consumption of podcasts uh, uh, especially in the last 3 uh, 4 years after uh, post covid we have seen that growth uh, and i think it is expected to continue uh, especially uh, like for next 5 years probably definitely yes so yeah uh, again Uh, as uh, the mediums when we talk about uh, communication uh, tools the mediums uh, first it, it was newsletters then uh, probably 
press releases came in, thought leadership, uh, then articles. But now, again, I was, uh, du I was uh, here during the uh, vi uh, story visual uh, storytelling uh, session. So, yeah, the same thing. Everybody's now, you know, they would want, they would want to give a face to words as well. So hence the videos, the involvement that we have seen in this industry podcast. Again, I'm not saying that, okay, audios uh, are not working well if you see Spotify or then Alexa, uh, iPhone, iTunes. They have gained massive popularity. But now the trend is moving towards uh, visual effect as well. So again, uh, a massive growth here. Absolutely, very rightly said. I think, and Mamta, just adding to what you said that, you know, podcasts have been around for two decades now and that's absolutely true. But I think the kind of shift that we are seeing from audio to now video podcasts and that's absolutely working well for our industry. Yeah. Uh, I, ha I have a thing to add yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, so sure. I think what's happening in the game of content is that rather than the medium uh, reaching the like the audience reaching the medium, the medium is now reaching the audience. So uh, with smartphones, with your screen size becoming as personal as your own mobile phones, uh, where you are consuming everything right from cricket to, you know, Netflix to OTT to uh, even podcasts. So the so it's actually uh, it's kind of a compelling change which has set in because there is just no other way. How else would you really gain or uh, stick to the attention of the consumer till the time the content really comes right there in your face? Yeah, in addition to this, <laughs> sorry, uh, the attention time. Uh, uh, like in the last session, we spoke about the attention time, like it's eight seconds, average eight seconds. But podcasts now have enabled to increase this, uh, you know, they have enabled uh, the audience to increase their, uh, you know, attention uh, time uh, on the screen or probably uh, because it's so easily accessible. You can listen to your podcast while doing anything. And second, uh, you control the narrative here. Uh, not only control, as uh, Anurag sir said, uh, you, influence, uh, you influence the narrative. So I think that's a win-win situation for every party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we can continue. I, I can see this. Our all women panel is just as talkative as it is illustrious. <laughs> uh, so, Shishi, that brings me to my ne next question. Can you maybe suggest some innovative ways? You've been in the PR space for a while. Uh, can you suggest some innovative ways that PR professionals can maybe leverage podcasts to go beyond just guest appearances? Yes, yeah, so I think podcasts are a very cool way of, uh, you know, having your own newsroom. They can become your own newsroom. When I say own newsroom for a brand's own newsroom where, you know, everybody has, um, like, media is showing various narratives about a certain brand. Mm -hmm. But this can be your, your space where brand narratives can come out authentically, deeply, and your audience can connect with them. It has all the, everybody used to have that in our website, we used to have press release section or a newsroom section. Now, that can, I think, can take over, I mean, not take over, but transcend to become like a nice visual audio newsroom. It has a lot of potential. And it also can help you in times of crisis that you, you have a credible plot platform to go out and talk for, from your point of view. Few more things which we can do with it, uh, 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 which I keep seeing other brands experimenting, is internal communications. You can use that for your employee engagement and internal communications. Uh, crisis management remains one where, as I said, we can uh, tell our stories more authentically. And uh, uh, yeah, I think these are few ways we can start, like just be, uh, just not being uh, having not having a guest over. One more thing which we can do is become that uh, I think for edtech uh, become uh, we've been thinking about what kind of podcast we should do. It should we can become that uh, thought leaders or if not thought leaders, skilling platform. You know, like go let let people come to you and know if they want to know anything in depth though podcast can be one of those ways don't have a guest you can be your own yeah. uh, you can be your own person if i like to talk about travel maybe i can have my own podcast and keep doing very in-depth shows so uh, i'll have a niche audience where a lot of people can come and learn from me so i think these are a few interesting ways which is um, uh, which are like uh, podcasts are um, in getting evolved. Absolutely, and I think the fact that you brought in newsrooms and how they are performing, even 
people are now moving towards uh, audio as well as video podcasts on their newsroom. So it's a great way to definitely leverage your company as well. Mamta, something that yeah, you'd like to add? Many thoughts actually. Uh, podcast is indeed a very creative medium and if uh, leveraged well, uh, can immensely add uh, to the value of the brand, the kind of narrative they want to drive, the kind of education uh, they want to spread, the kind of awareness they want to build, the kind of familiarity they want to, uh, you know, delve into. So, so many times, um, and, and we are, I'm assuming that, you know, people packed in this room are from the business of public relations. So, uh, when we talk about the soft profiling, that what goes behind in the making of a business or a CEO or a co-founder or a CXO, podcast allows for those conversations to happen and like uh, how Yashika said that in a in a way that you best like it to be there it's not always um, you know a compulsion on a podcaster or a podcast platform to be breaking news <laughs> or to be twisting news to get the public attention so in that sense uh, it, it can build and it does allow a lot of authenticity um, and authentic conversations to be built that you come as you are and uh, it's a candid style format. There, there are no compulsion to be doing anything sensational or fake musing uh, as how we, we are listening these days. So many, many interesting things can be uh, built uh, with podcasts and as how just Shristi said that yes, um, you know, adding to thought leadership, it, it is another avenue as a speaking opportunity. So for you and your clients uh, and your brand, this could be another medium of visibility, which is away and aside from events and you know industry uh, events, etc. I just want to add one more thing, which has been my ob observation that a lot of CEOs, a lot of leads, anybody in the business space, a lot of them are not comfortable in talking publicly or public platforms, and it is a t it is a truth. However, I mean, not everybody is comfortable coming out and talking. Podcast gives you and leaders or anybody that owns space, the comfortable space where they can put their point across beautifully to such a large number of audience. And I think it's a very subtle power which podcasts have given us uh, slowly as it is evolving. Very democratic medium, yeah. self-publishing, very easy uh, to go along with. You don't need too much of technical understanding uh, to be doing a podcast. You can start from the comfort of your bedroom, boardroom, wherever. And, uh, and that is it. You, you can choose to be on audio. You can choose a video format. You can choose an interactive format. Absolutely. And, edit. <laughs> and I'll just add because more or less they have <laughs> covered it all. Uh, yes, thought leadership remains the most important element uh, for uh, visual uh, podcasts. And uh, again, uh, as Srishti said, uh, uh, when she said that, okay, well, the leaders are not very comfortable going out. But when, we, she, when she said, no, the first uh, name came to my mind was Nikhil Kamath, yeah. uh, WTF, WTF series by him. Yes. Uh, I think that uh, podcast has given a great uh, boost to startups. One, he has uh, built a brand for himself. Secondly, of course, Zeroda as well. But uh, then uh, the other medium uh, where probably if the leadership is not comfortable, uh, we were just speaking outside as well, the technology, AI. Yes. Okay, every, they, they'll do everything for you. They'll give you voiceover, uh, they'll give you visuals. So yeah, it's not that difficult right now. But yes, owned media, what we say, uh, we should definitely incorporate uh, you know, podcasts in our own uh, media strategy for now. And uh, yes, uh, that's it. I'll actually move away from the questions and ask, I would like to ask you as well, all of you all, uh, that how do you think AI is playing a role in podcasts? Like, do you think that, Mamta, you are someone who's very personally also started, I've seen you starting off podcasts, right? So do you think AI will gen eventually take over or uh, that human touch will always remain and people would want to listen to that more than AI? So see, AI ca can be a great aid and an enabler, just like how it is with any profession and other area of artistry or content creation, etc. So yeah, what can, what can happen is that if you aid yourself with the right tools, you can uh, maybe have frequency uh, of a podcast show which is over and above than a human is capable of putting out. 
with the right kind of edits, uh, just as how Yashika added, uh, with the right kind of, uh, you know, audio feed if you give it and it can put the right kind of edits and uh, it can create reels for you. It can do a lot of yes. things in a very automated way. The uh, user-generated content, which, uh, which can help you in promoting your podcast well, which can help you in scripting your podcast well, which can help you um, in acing the edit, which can help you in putting out the number of uh, podcasts at a certain speed and frequency. But, uh, you know, there is a counter to that that people say and just uh, how uh, even Shishri said that uh, there are hundreds of podcasters who are putting out their right. content yes. and there'll be thousands more. And why will one podcast succeed over the other is only purely because of the content, the narrative, the style, and the podcaster himself or herself. Absolutely. So um, uh, I, I always say that, and I've been uh, doing a lot of series on that on my personal you know, LinkedIn and Insta handles also, that AI will do well if it is managed well by the humans. Absolutely. So it, uh, the technology will always be limited to that extent because it is a machine learning. So the machine will only learn as much as input that the human will give it. So they will, it can never replace creativity, it can never replace innovation, and it can never replace human intelligence. Very rightly said, Mamta. I think uh, just, just one thing is that uh, like pre and production, uh, it can help in pre and production. I'm still in the denial stage that AI can do anything. <laughs> I still want to like see that uh, it'll take time. But one, one thing which, which I see is that, you know, so many people say that, you know, the, that podcaster is their friend. They understand because they hear them so much. So they, they start identifying with the podcaster's personality. They want to go back to listening to them every day or whenever. Yeah. So I still think the AI bit of it, the, the, it can aid as Mamta said. But uh, you need that human being, that spontaneity, that touch, that authenticity which will come with. And it needs so much more just beyond just beyond making it look visually good. The content is the king here and the, and how you deliver it and how you engage with your audience. And let's also have a perspective on where AI is in the game of things right now. So, I mean, uh, a recent read, I think I was just uh, reading, flipping through LinkedIn report or something yesterday that AI is as flawed and faulty and especially so uh, in case of women. So if you are a women podcaster, and I give it my audio recognition feed. And uh, so the AI, the way it is developed, that it's not even gender inclusive for now. So the, yeah, so, so the technology is so flawed that uh, on an AI input, when you give a woman's voice, and if I want that, I give all intonation of my voices to AI. And then I say that you auto generate a script around this subject. And now in my voice, just go and intonate the whole thing and, and create a show out of it, there will still be a lot of lags and errors. It will not be able to read into few words from a woman's uh, voice, for example. So the voice recognition uh, inputs also in AI are not that evolved. Yeah. So before we go and jump the gun and say that, oh, AI is here and it'll take over everything, let's, it's, it's, it's not even in its toddler stage right now. Right. Yeah. And as you rightly said, we'll also promote the spread of misinformation. Yes, absolutely. Right. But the sense of podcast, when we talk about podcast, the sense is the deeper connection mm. that we, you know, build with the podcaster yeah. or the content, uh, the emotional connect. Uh, what I feel is that uh, AI, I'm not sure if AI would be able to do that. But uh, yeah, again, human touch uh, in podcasts. See, this wave right now, it's podcast, podcasts everywhere, right? Yeah. Uh, every fifth person probably is thinking or has already, yeah, you know, started. Yeah. So human touch uh, is very important. And uh, because this emotional connect for me, uh, in my opinion, emotional connect and that deeper connection that I build with probably Nikhil Kamath or somebody else who comes, uh, like who speaks or who talks about the experiences, I would have more inclination towards that, yeah. not uh, uh, AI generated uh, podcast. Yeah. So. I mean, let's not even go till AI. Uh, I, I, in my podcast journey in less than two years, have uh, understood that what difference does it make to have a podcast which is audio, yes. then have a podcast which is through the screen, that is Zoom or you know whatever your other apps, 
uh, Zencaster is what I used to use, and now be having a studio right. and having guests over invited in the show. Yeah. So there is a sea difference between these three formats of podcast itself. Yeah. So forget AI. I mean, I mean, the human touch is so irreplaceable. The right. human intelligence is so irreplaceable that even just with the formats, uh, you know, things things uh, take a complete sea change. Right, right, yeah. of course. And now while we've touched upon thought leadership here and there, all three of you all have uh, spoken about it, but I think let's just delve deeper into that. I would like to understand what kind of advantages do you think that podcasts will offer to build that kind of brand, brand awareness, strengthen that brand awareness, as well as, uh, you know, also give a push to thought leadership? Uh, multiple, honestly, multiple advantages. Uh, be it intimacy, trust, emotional connect, or uh, uh, now multi-channel uh, uh, platforms, uh, repurposing what we say that, okay, we are sharing it, video, small clips. Uh, I would just uh, focus or would want to highlight one good advantage over every other medium is uh, the analytics and world with podcasts. Uh, of course, you can, uh, the downloads would be one metric, but uh, I would say the demographics, the insights on demographics, uh, or uh, be it uh, the episode performance, uh, behavior patterns. Uh, I think uh, that's is uh, that is very important to probably align uh, for the strategies uh, for brand uh, to optimize uh, strategies or optimize these you know uh, insights uh, to probably maximize the impact of like uh, the other strategy. So I believe that analytics is what podcasts, the outcome, the measurable outcome, what podcasts are, are giving right now is keeping that, you know, at a upper, uh, you know, uh, from the other mediums. Right. So, yeah, that one uh, point. Uh, and, and as I say, podcasts, uh, everybody uh, in, in, in this nation, no, everybody loves uh, hearing stories. They say that they like to hear stories. So, uh, podcast has it all covered. So, yeah. I would say the, the, the form of the content. So, uh, you know, you, uh, as much as you would love uh, to talk about a subject as an authored thought leader article, you can, you have a cap of, let's say, 800 words at, max, at best. And on a podcast show, the range can be from 15 minute talk to 60 minute exactly. talk or even beyond. Yes. So uh, the, the uh, longevity of the content in that uh, form, uh, and especially when you are a brand who is wanting to raise awareness, who is wanting to do something educational, um, uh, something more, uh, you know, from the understanding and awareness perspective for the consumer. So if I'm a brand into menstruation hygiene, uh, there is only so much that I can talk through press releases exactly. or uh, articles. Eventually, I will get down to doing some BTL activations with the community or creating uh, a community or uh, leading uh, with thought leadership, speaking opportunities on some industry platforms and pedestrian, and still podcasts will win over all of that. Yeah. So that being one, and... Uh, uh, second is also the um, aging. So the content, how much, do, uh, how does it age on any other platform, for example? Right. A news release or your best article uh, might be there on the shelf of a media uh, publication portal for, let's say, at best two years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, podcast can stay forever. It's your digital asset. Absolutely. So it's, it's a thing in your armor which will always, and, and it SEO, mm. the, the kind of yeah. uh, SEO reach and uh, visibility it can build for a brand. Just that one podcast, and if all goes well, and if there is virality around that um, uh, podcast, and let's say, and the multi-channel, like uh, how Yashika said, that usually when you do a podcast, especially independent creators, uh, till the time you obviously reach a certain um, level of, uh, you know, let's say, audience reach, you go and push out your content on, let's say, eight or 10 platforms at any given point. Right. It'll be Amazon, Geo, Savan, Ghana, whatever, like uh, the top 8, 10, uh, 20 yeah. platforms. And then there is the geographical uh, um, parameter to that, that even in just first six months of my own show, 
I already had a lot of inquiry and interest coming from New York, from oh. Australia, right? So how does that happen? Yeah. Right? So that's the power of the medium, the platform, Absolutely. the content, and all of that uh, given together. Yeah. I think they've covered everything, but I think <laughs> two things which I use podcasts for is understanding complex topics. Mm. I think the way we can... Podcast is such a beautiful storytelling medium that you can... Uh, I don't understand climate change. I mean, everybody does uh, understand climate change, but if I want to deep dive and understand various things, it's just one of the things. I want to understand stocks. There are various difficult things. According to a person, it's a great medium to, to, uh, to basically uh, sh uh, share more about complex top topics. So that's, that's one for me. And secondly, it has a ready audience. If I want to market something, I don't have to go to the clutter of... Uh, digital marketing or various other things where I don't know how. I mean, because it's it's usually not so clear the parameters, the matrix, and all of that. With podcast, audience comes a lot more specific. There is more a lot more specificity to my audience in, in health or mental health or whatever. So you know this is going to the right audience. The 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 money you put behind that is going like it's almost hundred eighty ninety nine percent is going right. So the specificity of the audience and how we can use podcasts to make sure that we are co we are communicating the complex uh, uh, complex things easily. These are the two things I, I see. It'll, I think, Shishti, yeah. that's such a unique thing that you yeah. touched upon, that, you know, the whole idea of decoding complex things, because there's such an infinite pool of information yeah. when it comes to podcasts, right? In fact, uh, I mean, US, 40% um, of the population consumes podcasts, yeah. and India is the third largest podcast yeah. market, as we popularly know. Uh, but there is podcast for everything, even for gardening tips to, you know, beauty makeup tips. There is a podcast to everything. So what uh, uh, Sh uh, Shishti just said, I'm adding to that, that uh, there is a discoverability factor and the audience comes seeking you. Yeah. So in that sense, they are half ready, half there, wanting to exactly get or take from what they want to take from your brand. For sure, for sure. So uh, I think all of us already have been in the industry now and uh, we, while we've already discussed this, I feel, but uh, do you think that it's going to be an essential part, like podcasts are going to be an offering for uh, PR uh, agencies as a part of the whole toolkit? Oh yeah, 100%. And uh, I'm glad that we're having this discussion two years hence after I have launched my show because this is something that I've been talking about from last two years that uh, the way that I see it's a hand in glove uh, thing between PR and podcast and like I famously say that they are the two peas in the same pod. So uh, they will very, very uh, be closely intertwined in all our strategies, especially PR. Uh, of course, uh, I would not undersell the fact that it has to uh, pace up and take on a larger scale uh, somewhere a visibility in your marketing spends because uh, forever and ever the content creator cannot put out everything out there for free. So the monetization part to part podcast is another aspect that will also have a lot to offer to brands, be it in show placements or be it content which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, branded or uh, the way we say that the, the branded content or the sponsored shows uh, or, uh, uh, you know, putting out uh, limited series and editions um, which are, which could be a part of a brand's campaign or philosophy, something that they want to promote very topically. Right. So uh, this is here to stay for sure. I have a small anecdote to share. Uh, uh, so it will show us that how podcasts are actually, is, we can't ignore, ignore them as part, of, as part of PR. One of our, comp I'm not going to name the person, but one of the CEOs I met lately, who's a legacy company CEO, he said, I used to enjoy going to Arch Thak and ABP and give my interviews. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I've told my communication partners that I want to be more on podcasts. Mm -hmm. It makes me hear, it's easy. It is uh, the pressure of non-breaking news, and they will, yeah. and there the pressure uh, of you know they will uh, they, they will grill you, and all of that gets off, and you're able to tell a story in much more comfortable way. I can 
uh, tell about my brand and my perspective in much more comfortable way. So I have moved on doing from TV shows to podcasts, the, the popular podcasts. So I think that 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 answers your question that how yeah. it needs it is going to be a very important part of our strategy. So now do we uh, are we seeing a physics wala podcast very soon? <laughs> I'm not revealing that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, again for now yes. Uh, podcast uh, as uh, Mamta said yes uh, India is the third largest country after US and China uh, but again 10 to only 10 to 12 percent of the Indian audiences like they are engaged with podcast so uh, I think uh, there's a huge market uh, yet to be explored and uh, now when we see uh, since I am from the regional uh, communication uh, PR I call myself as a master of that uh, I have seen like earlier, majority of these podcast podcasters or listeners were coming from metros. But now we have seen lately they are coming from tier 2, tier 3 markets. If you see or uh, probably uh, Jaipur kind of a city or uh, Lucknow or Patna, they were huge. Uh, it's, uh, the market is huge. Uh, and uh, uh, when we talk about, I think the next wave uh, when we were talking about audio, visual, I think the next wave is gonna be regional language podcasts. Uh, I mean, uh, see, uh, go to Mirchi, okay, they've launched their uh, Bengali podcast show. Uh, well, they also plan to uh, enter into other languages. Uh, then on Spotify, Tamil podcasts are enjoying same popularity as Hindi podcasts. Right. So again, I think this is gonna be the next big wave. Uh, yet to be explored and uh, again but as uh, as in the industry for a uh, you know decade now I've seen we like we all uh, have seen the rise and fall of uh, various platforms be it newsletters or Kurt uh, Facebook for that matter and now Twitter uh, I think LinkedIn is <laughs> gaining momentum in that uh, case uh, so po uh, podcasts are a big talk of the town right now right. And with this, uh, like in this diverse country, uh, I really don't want to comment, but I want to, uh, since it's a long road, I want to see, I want to experience the twist and turns that this industry <laughs> probably will get us uh, as the story unfolds. So yeah, I think yeah. that's the big. Absolutely, absolutely. I think regional podcasts will also definitely become the new thing and a lot yeah. of people are now selling it, of course. Uh, Mamta, do you have any uh, insights to share in that space that you know how uh, how uh, Shishti shared an anecdote? Do you think now that you are also speaking to a lot of people for your podcast, do they are they becoming more open and do you think they are more honest when they're in front of the camera like that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. One because uh, there is no pressure. Right. There is no pressure that uh, this can fire back. There is no pressure about editorial controls that what will. Uh, get published or not. Um, it is a candid medium. I'm not a journalist. They are not on a line of fire. So that kind of immediately comforts and eases uh, the guests to be on the show. I have actually had a great fortune of, uh, you know, hosting right from uh, Oscar winning uh, or nominee filmmakers to CEOs to um, uh, experts and coaches and chefs and authors, all of them on my show. And the real reason why they come so unfiltered, uh, my show's name is Unbound, and the real reason why they do that unbounding is uh, because there is no such pressure. But of course, um, it is to each to his own. It is also the, the personal style of a podcaster, what he or she can bring on board, what is the kind of level of um, you know, comfort he or she can extend uh, via his, his or her mannerism, demeanor, or just understanding that this is not a story that is sitting in front of me, but it's an actual human. And I have had a lot of breaking moments on my show, like things do get so personal, so deep, so engaging, and so emotional. And uh, if, you, if you really carry it out uh, in a very um, you know, human way, it, it, this can bring out the best of the best. It has the potential to really uh, get the story, not from that point of view that I want that story, but from the point of view that, that there are two humans who are really talking and bearing their yeah. soul out. So I've had many such uh, instances, be it uh, women entrepreneurs who have come and broken down, be it um, kids or people with special needs, 
after whose story I have broken down on the show. So there have been many such uh, candid moments, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure. Shishi, while we've come to the end of our questions, I would I want to ask you for any final thoughts on this conversation, on what do you think, except for the fact that you're in denial of AI <laughs> and how I it's am. playing and a major I role. I'll continue, I, I think I'll continue this <laughs> denial for a while. No, I think uh, podcast is fashionable, as everybody said, but as I, as I started my conversation, uh, and, and uh, uh, Mamta is right, there is nothing wrong and right, and we have to see how it evolves, but I still think consistency is the key with podcasts. You can't just do one podcast and get off and... Uh, expect it to be, um, you know, the viral or the talk, uh, I mean, it should be talked about. I think we should all, if you want to do podcast, WTF by Nikhil Kamath, how he's done this yeah. is a lot of learning for all of us. Uh, and yeah, that's that's about it. We, we pretty much covered everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we have taken more yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to still uh, <laughs> let the buck stop here. So uh, my my few takes is that uh, it is inevitable. It's a writing on the wall uh, because of the ease of the format, the kind of uh, uh, content it allows you to put out the kind of narratives and it will be a favorite medium for a long time to come. Of course, in social digital space, we have been witnessing rises and falls and that will remain so. So uh, while there will always be an audience for all kind of content, right uh, long form short form we will see a lot of packaging repackaging shifts that will happen yes. in podcasts as well and uh, so maybe the same podcast will get packaged into many different ways yeah. right so uh, because not every audience is attuned to be going and you know plugging in for 60 minute or a 40 minute Absolutely. show and be investing themselves so much so uh, given all of that as a constant, which is a change, and that's going to be the central central to any kind of uh, marketing, uh, uh, you know, tool that you look at it. You will have to keep revising, rehashing, relooking at it. But uh, podcast and PR are going to be two great partners uh, for a long time to come. And my uh, personal appeal it is to the brand custodians and brand owners and marketers to look at this in a more meaningful uh, way Absolutely. because it has lots to offer. Yeah. I would agree and uh, I think uh, again podcast is a big thing right now but uh, it again like for me traditional media also plays very important role that way and they will just not uh, take over the you know that position from traditional media but both of these will complement each other. I think traditional media for widespread distribution probably, but podcasts for thought leadership. So it has to complement each other. So, so you are saying that uh, podcasts are nothing but just another wave in the ocean that will ultimately settle down? Not settle down, honestly. It will right. evolve because the industry that we are working in, we have seen such great trends before and podcast is now the talk of the town. Right. Uh, for the next five years, definitely podcast will Till be... Till something be better and new comes yes, up. Yes, yes. And right. AI, we have seen AI, how it's, it's again another disruption in uh, this industry. So Just yeah. enjoy it till it lasts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. Thank you so much uh, yeah. for this amazing, amazing session. It was an honor to share the stage with you, uh, with all of you all.